It's on. It's on. Am I on? Okay. Thank you for that fabulous introduction, Eileen, and I'm very grateful to be on the panel with all of you today. I'm going to talk a bit about trauma, and I need the clicker. And the way that that intersects with experiences of marginalization, oppression, historical and generational trauma, and that these are things that we need to engage and bring into our creation of art in order to create resilience and healing. So when we look at it, a socio-ecological view, or what I like to call sort of the big picture, the context of how trauma occurs, it occurs in our position, the way that we are who we are, the way that we walk in the world, the way that we've been treated, how we interact with others, and how those intersections of our identities show up in the way that trauma has occurred or those experiences. And in this model, we see that on an individual level, in a relational format, in community, as well as in society. And so we need to take all of those things into consideration as we look at healing from trauma. Oftentimes, when we think about trauma-informed care and going to presentations and seeing speakers that speak around trauma-informed care, we really do sort of the checkbox of, I want to make sure there's trust being built, we want to reinforce that folks are safe, we want a, a time and a space where someone can engage in safe space because that's what's been often taken around um, experiences of trauma. We want to build a collaborative format so that I'm hearing someone's voice, there's safe space for them to be themselves, and we want to empower someone. One of the other tenets, though, is this idea of an individually, culturally relevant format. Um, and we have lots of words to talk about that. Diversity, cultural relevance, we used to call it cultural competency. And I, I really want to speak to that piece. Sometimes that feels like it drops off or it's an afterthought. And it's important for us to really make that central because it is central to who we are. What we know is that trauma occurs in the very personal, social, and political context of our very being. The way that we walk in the world in terms of race, gender identity, our sexual orientation, religion, immigration status, body size, our first language, all of these pieces of who we are, and the way that we prioritize those. Some of those identities are visible, some of those identities are invisible. And what we see is that, and this is not an exhaustive street sign here, but whether that's racism or ableism or the way that, that transphobia shows up, that having safety to bring our full selves to the table is critical in terms of how we heal. I know for me that being a Windows leader and then also having Windows be a part of my healing journey at some very critical junctures in my life that if I wasn't able to sit at that table at the intersections of how I've experienced things, um, as a black woman um, in a context that really honored that that was part of my journey as well, maybe part of that targeting, part of how my story and narrative shows up. And especially we want to take care that as the context is important, that we're really looking at how the traumatic experience, including the experience of oppression, has an impact on our mind and body, and specifically on the brain. What we know is that oppression, microaggressions, discrimination, marginalization, show up in the way we respond, in those natural responses, the hypervigilance, the sense of, of you know, fear, um, feeling you know, disjointed and, and wanting to disconnect in relationship or in community. These are things that show up around oppression in the brain and body just in the same ways, and my colleagues are going to talk about this, in the same ways that trauma does. And often we leave that as on the back burner, like it's something else. And historical and generational trauma and the way we carry that in our minds and bodies is as much a part of and central to our healing process as these inst the instances of trauma, whether that's abuse, neglect, sexual violence, domestic violence, any of those pieces that we're going to, to work with and in community on. We want that individualistic response and really to look at the trauma experiences, including oppression, not just focus on how someone copes, 
right? Those survival mechanisms, the ways that we maybe have learned to shut ourselves down, to distrust others, to not be present, to numb out, to escape through things. We understand those in terms of oftentimes types of trauma that people experience. Do we understand them though in terms of violence? This quote came from um, seeing uh, Father Boyle in person, and we were working on a uh, conversation across working in domestic violence, uh, intimate partner violence, sexual assault, elder abuse and child abuse, and gang involvement. And, and one of the things that he said in his speech to us was that rather than standing in judgment of the survivor in front of me and how they carry their burdens, right, including those burdens around I know that what walks into a room before me is someone's misconceptions, assumptions, and preconceived notions about how I'm supposed to be or act or what group I belong to or how they had this experience with someone else who looked like me. Do we know that stuff, right? Rather than how they carry their burdens, I must stand in awe of what they carry, right? That that is part of the load. Those historical and generational traumas, the trauma of immigration, migration, of refugee status, the impact of having your gender narrative be invisible to so many, being misgendered every day, having folks literally and overtly discount your experience or your existence. These are pieces of the puzzle in terms of how trauma narratives show up. And if we engage in the wonderful ways that we can through the process, of art through the process of windows, one of the things that I see is that engagement on the level of bring your full self, who you are and your story, I'm gonna, sorry, is welcome. We know how powerful that is to feel whole and to feel accepted allows for that compassion to grow. It says, you are worthy, you are whole, you are lovable, you are capable, and in creating that space, that time through art, and inviting and acknowledging that those other pieces around trauma and oppression are there, we really bring an, a, another level of depth. We are able to unpack those layers of multiple forms of trauma that we all walk through um, in terms of those multiple and intersecting identities. One of the things to be really careful about, and I think this is important, is to think about how many of the mainstream theories that we work with are about intervening and speak to things as if they're single incidents happening in a vacuum, right? This happened and we're going to address that and you're going to talk about that thing well, but that thing happened to me. And if I've already experienced multiple times in my life where I've been told, shown the nuance around me, the society, remember that ecological view? Relationship, community, fam family, right? What if there's already trauma, already that sense of marginalization, being disempowered? Now I'm starting from a place where the healing has to take place both within my positionality and in terms of whatever those incidents are that are occurring. And often dealing with that in a world where those microaggressions are continuing to occur and even major things are continuing to occur on a daily basis, right? The layers are there. So we wanna be really careful about how theories can reinforce that that's an afterthought, that those internalized, those generalized anxieties around trauma, oppression, marginalization, and our identities can be forgotten. We wanna bring those uh, to the forefront. Because what we know about trauma and victimization and oppression is that both are about power and control. They're about power over. How many places in our life do we even have non-hierarchical, sort of flattened surfaces, right, in our, in our experience to be in a power sharing place? They can change our worldview. They impact the way we feel about ourselves, our self-concept. And what we know then about the power of art, and we've heard this already this morning in many ways, creating our own and in Fabian's wonderful sharing with us, that windows and art is a place where we invite the full and wholeness 
of each person that we can say you are here and we engage with you and this is a window of time for you to bring your full self, your full experiences. And I hope that we'll continue to acknowledge how marginalization and oppression and all the intersecting ways that we identify and walk in the world is a part of that journey. Thank you so much.